Uh, greetings family, Bomani Timer here with my good brother Tutmos and Kofi Bruce and we're here to talk about Sheikh Antadia Black Africa and its vision for the 14 steps of African unity. Alright brother Tutmos, are you going to set it off? <laughs> yeah, um, the upset for these uh, 14 steps uh, here on uh, page 88 of the book in conclusion we can specify following 15 essential points as basic principles for concrete action um, and brothers you can comment after I read each one to restore consciousness of our historic unity that African remembrance of our story of the great kingdom that who we were from Mao and Ghana and Mali back to Kemen and Nubia and those ancient um, kingdoms and I like the way he started it as that, as number one. <laughs> Word. <laughs> you Word. Know, and there's a purpose that that's number one. Word. You know? And um, to restore our consciousness to who we are actually is what that means. You mm -hmm. know, you, you're not going to go ahead if you don't know where you started. You right. know, you're only going to be lost in the right now and you're not going to be able to be pointed in your right future. So, right. you know, you start we, with the foundation. Right. And sometimes we just have to be basic. You know, mm -hmm. we, we think beyond where we actually are, you know, and that mm -hmm. gets us past where we need to be. Right. So we got to go to the beginning, you know, in, in America or throughout the whole diaspora, I think we need to somehow get like a, a, a one culture that we all can tune into that for the upliftment of all of us, you know, mm -hmm. because before we could put anything into place, he said we need to bestow our consciousness of who we are. Right. So that's right. that's so number one right there. Me. That's number one. That's number one. And then number two, so it'd be functional to work for linguistic unification on a territorial and continental scale with a single African cultural and government language superseding all others. That's basically what I just said about, you know what I'm saying? Same thing. <laughs> and I didn't even know that follow, right. you know. And, and, so and that's and, two. <laughs> and then but and it's so important that it came back really with number three with it again. Mm hmm Because we understand that communication being based on broken up by them different colonial borders, by them different oppressors, the French, the Portuguese, the British, even mm -hmm. down to the Americans. Right. Uh to raise our national tongues to the rank of government. Languages used in Parliament and in the writing of the laws. Language would no longer stand in the way of electing the Parliament or other office or person from the grassroots who might be unlettered. <laughs> the art man. Mm -hmm. Number four, to work out effective form of representation for the female sector of the nation. Y'all heard that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, each and that. every war, each and every war, which in another section there's the, what he calls the bicameral system, which is the two chambers, which on the governmental level is based on who they was voted for and all of that, but on the village, on the community level, there's the bicameral system, the men's chamber and the women's chamber, and that's how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and number five, to live African federal unity. The immediate unification of French and English speaking African alone can act as a test for this. It's the only way to start Black Africa along the slope of its historic destiny once and for all. To wait while invoking secondary considerations is to allow the various states time to harden in their shapes and become unsuited to federation as in Latin America. Right. Um, so that's number five what Diop laid out. The same thing like what we are now. Where we, you know, even though all of us speak the same languages, it's still those different separations. Yeah. Even on the organizational level that keep us separated. But he was talking about on that West African level. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, you go in that where y'all got the land over there from the dock from uh, Senegal with the Wolof all the way to, you know what I'm saying, Ghana and Benin and that you know what I'm saying, unification of, of language, which I think they went, what, what they said was Swahili, mm -hmm. right? That's what everybody's supposed to be on. Right. I mean, we even had uh, Idi Amin, you know, try right. to implement yeah. that one language for all Africans right. all, all across the world. Right. So, I mean, just think of the ramifications of if we all spoke an African language, everyone. Mm -hmm. So no matter where we are, 
we could talk to each other. That's why because, you know, right now, if we That's don't know Spanish, we can't talk to our brothers in Cuba and those places. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If we don't know French, we can't even talk to our over brothers here, in France. Yeah, so. Over here, the Spanish on the continent is Swahili because even the French ones, they'll still be on the Swahili right. still. Because that uh, that's on the continent and it really come out of the African and the Arab right. language. That's where it came from the East Coast here. Because they, they had it had been a language too that right. they could talk to the Africans right. and the Africans could talk back. Right. So right. That, it's all about unification. Right, right. So that federal unity, federal, mm -hmm. talking about states that broke up different tribes and regions that have that linguistic unity, which uh, they you know what I'm saying. There's only three dialects. In Africa, three different ones: the Nilotic, the Twa, which is the ancient language, and then the other one. I think it was something akin to the uh, Swahili, but that's where everything else has derivatives off of when you study the root back to the origin of the languages. But uh, in the 14 steps to unity, uh, to African unity, moving forward from that federal unity, <laughs> the up say for number six to oppose out of hand any idea of creating white states anywhere in Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter where the idea come from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's number six. Number seven, to make sure our constitution is so written that no industrial bourgeoisie can come into being. This would prove that we true, are truly socialists by preventing in advance one of the fundamental ills of capitalism. Who today would oppose or prevent a measure of this sort against a class that does not even exist in Africa? So talking about that uh, industrial bourgeoisie, which really is the European, he said don't even exist in Africa, but that would be created that he could see now that is there by them cats, the Nigerians, the billionaires and all that. They got car companies and everything. They produce the cars and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Nigeria. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So that industrial bourgeoisie, while we still under the, while the governments are making decisions, they allow AFRICOM and all of them to be doing, you know, like they just said a couple of months ago about Ghana. Uh, they were saying they feel like the uh, uh, military in there. What they said, no, 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 no. They, it wasn't like that, but it was showing more military cooperation. No, Absolutely. it wasn't particularly yeah. putting a base in Ghana. No, they wasn't, but they were showing more subs. Uh, subservience to uh, that 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 regional power, which is the United States. Said, but, like you said, military cooperation. So uh, yeah, it's not it's agreement you know with the devil. <laughs> now, nah, right. So and uh, 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 so after that, number eight to create a powerful state industry, giving primacy to industrialization, development, and mechanization of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Number eight, that's number eight, to create a powerful state industry giving primacy to industrialization, development, and mechanization of agriculture. Go on, man, spin them tractors, man, and get the food. That's basic, man. Right. All the arable land. All you got to do is plant the seeds and be able to manage it, keep the elephants and all that from running through your stuff and all that, build you some fences and stuff. That's all that takes uh, to create a powerful modern army possessing an air force and endowed with a civic education that would make it unlikely to indulge in Latin American type pushes. That was the whole argument between and Diop Day, the ones who end up being the petty bourgeoisie, which was Pinochet and all of them in, uh, down there in uh, uh, Chile and what was occurring uh, with Sekou uh, with, with Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana because they died in like 84. You know what I'm saying? And they had not exiled him anyway. Took him to France and he was married to the white girl. Was, yeah. Yeah. The French lady. The French lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And gave us this and did that. I guess he was like, well, hell, if I'm that smart and I can prove it, I just, I, I know they got me trapped. Whatever I can get published, I can get out there. And gave it to us in the timeless. That broke up with you in every region. But let me keep moving. Um, the modern army. Um, to create, uh, number 10, to create the technical institutes without which a modern state cannot exist. Nuclear physics and chemistry, electronics, aeronautics, applied chemistry, and so on. That's a pan African lie, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but it was. That's what we were doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to send it to you. 
Um, oh, and on the lifestyle thing, to reduce luxurious living standards and judiciously equalize salaries in such a way that political positions are comparable to workers' jobs. Right. You make much as a garbage man, fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, you go up there, you get to fly a little couple more times and all that. A couple of perks from working for the government and being law, but it ain't no damn two or three hundred where y'all got the enclaves going on somewhere else. So that just that that among the people. That just means uh, you know the people that actually pursue that is doing it for the people and not right. for the for the dollars. Right. So that that's a good thing. But they live living like the people. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you're working for the people because hey, you, you are. Send your child to the camp over here. I don't know, man. It's it's kind of that kind of expensive. Right. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> well, what you doing? Yeah, that's yeah. how you know when you, you when you down with them. Right. Um, um, Twelve to organize production cooperatives made up of volunteer volunteers owning adjacent fields next to each other in order to mechanize and modernize agriculture and permit large scale production. People joining the land together. Mm -hmm. Thirteen to create model state farms with a view to broadening the technical and social experience of still ungrouped individual farmers. Countryside collectivization will meet with a thousand times less resistance among us than it did in European countries for all the reasons the author has previously adduced in pre-colonial black Africa. That's another one from Diop. <laughs> that come before uh, civilization of barbarism and African origin of civilization myth of reality. Pre-colonial Black Africa, Diop, Shagan and Diop, one of the greatest scholars, you know, and we just look at what it is he laid out for us. That okay, Kofi, it's on you. That's for number fourteen. That was reduce luxurious living, and to uh, cooperatives were growing. Number thirteen, the state farms. Oh yeah, that's and it. That's okay, it, that's and then it. fourteen from Bree Diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what Diop say? Number fourteen, number man. Fourteen. Listen to this: to repopulate Africa in proper time. To repopulate Africa in proper time. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should rewind and put that. See, here we go where we're, we we should have let him in with the with the with the p word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect family. So we need uh, more people. Brother Tuck, appreciate you sharing the fourteen steps. Uh, brother Kofi Boos, you have any input on the uh, layout? Hey, wait a minute, Kofi oh, yeah, yeah, Kofi yeah, Boos, yeah, 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 that's that, 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 To carry out with conviction the policy of full employment in order to progressively eliminate the material dependence of certain social categories. Oh, mm -hmm. which what? Well, look, there's a footnote that says the social categories. What it is? Man, that footnote is beyond look, my glasses. No, 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 that he was uh, referring to that had uh, that policy to to make that full employment probably a workers union um, which with Diop worked closely with so it was actually with 15 and 14 steps to African unity but it actually ended up being number 15 and add another one the, the comrade Diop and that implementation being carried out with Africa for the Africans we well, pre so. well, well, appreciate uh, you, you uh, sharing that, um, Tut. I definitely want to get uh, Kofi Boo's analysis on the 14 steps that we talked about. <laughs> and while you're sharing it, mm -hmm. I just want to show folks the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kofi. The, the, how do we move from here to what, what it is when we, Africa for the Africans becomes that instrument where our people actually get to experience that, what, what the ancestors left us, and how we mark making it a reality today i mean we just got to continue what we're doing you know it's, it's you know we just got to take one step at a time you know one step at a time we have to analyze the totality of the situation that we're in you know we know it's hard even trying to convince our own people to get on board and let's mm -hmm. be ourselves you know what i'm saying <laughs> so you know we just keep doing what we're doing take one step at a time then each one teach one reach one yeah basically you know, so we were reading Diop from when 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 was that book book written? Was that eighty eight? Yeah. 
but the family so I, appreciate it. Translate it. Appreciate your energy, brothers. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's close on this one. Uh, Kofi Musa, thank you for your input energy and family. Uh, that's a nice analysis of the book, uh, Black Africa. Black We're always using Africans. our reference. Because the most important thing Africans. about Black Africa is the fact that we have everything in Africa as a they black didn't people. Give me this shirt back, Bo Marley. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this. I'm just telling y'all on camera, so if I, when I run out of here, be, be beefing with me later on this day. Be like, I'm supposed to try to run out of here with his shirt on. I would keep that. I would go for the Africans May 23rd through June 5th, 2018, The Journey of a Lifetime Tour. That's the book. You can find it uh, online www.africafortheafricans.org. Take the trip with the comrade. Mm -hmm. This trip didn't happen. Bruce, this trip actually in two together. days, right? Absolutely. Yeah. This is right? the Wednesday. They're going to leave the lead now. Just to send off <laughs> to the fam and the comrades. Um, 